Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness on technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is Center Stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumu Kuhui Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumu Kuhui Theater. Um, my special guest on the show today is Will Kahele, who is also the office manager um, an actor and a director at Kumakuhua Theater. He, you may not know this, he's also an actor at Aulani, and we're going to talk about it that <laughs> in just a moment. But first of all, I'd like to say um, I did have another guest scheduled to be on the show. If you're looking for him, I'm very sorry he's not here, and I hope he's okay. I didn't hear anything from him. Um, uh, so I hope that everything is all right, and I'm really grateful for Will being here today. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, thanks for coming over and doing this. And I really, um, uh, yeah, I hope that everything is, is okay. And, uh, and if someone is tuning in specifically to see him, I, I hope they stay and enjoy the conversation. Yeah. Let's talk for just a moment about what is going on in the political world right now, because after we leave here, we're going to go back and uh, watch the debate. Once again, I posted something on my Facebook page that mm. I didn't, I didn't think was terribly incendiary, but it turned into a bit of a maelstrom on my page. Do you, are you are you posting anything political? How do you feel about that? I am not posting anything political. I'm. I phase over those that do. Mm. Um, if they're for one side or the other. I don't want to hear it anymore. I just want to make my own decisions and. I don't. I don't really think there's anyone undecided at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. It just seems super polarizing, and yeah, maybe I should stop posting stuff like. Well, but you don't. You you post. Um, uh, it it's not blatantly political. You know? Well, you didn't see the one I posted. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> but usually, it makes you think. You know, when I read your stuff, it goes. You know, you think like, hmm. Yeah, okay, oh. whatever. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Zuri just asked why I post. I just outed you, Zuri. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I post stuff, I post those things on Facebook because I'll read something that will ring a bell and I'll think, oh, either why didn't I think of that or, oh, I wish I would have said that. And um, uh, I, I, I know for certain, you know, I, I did a news program here on Think Tech for you know, five mornings a, a, a week for almost a year. I spent a lot of time reading um, uh, about what is going on in the news. And if I learned anything doing that is that you do not state anything as fact a, and unless you have read it or listened to it or have seen it or been there. Th there have to be at least three touches before you say, yes, uh, I am going to put my name behind it. That's how I felt about it anyway. And that's how I feel about my... Facebook page, and also um, that yeah, you, you, there's a, there's always going to be someone who can say, oh blah blah blah, but if you don't have the facts to back right. it up, I, I think we kind of learned that in news writing in the senior year in, in high school. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, you know, <laughs> and you can't say anything unless you have the facts. You know, um, and a newspaper is supposed to be um, what do you say? Um, not on one side or the other, right? They're supposed to be yeah. um, open to all opinions. Objective, yeah. Objective, you have thank to. you. Yeah, and you, if you're going to put your name behind it, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or, uh, you know, uh, in the New York Times, then you better make sure. There, there were a lot of times when I, um, you know, I would get up in the morning and I'd, I'd read a, a headline and think, ooh, I want to talk about that today. But I would do my research and realize, oh, that's not the story at all. It would have been more interesting if it was the first headline, but mm -hmm. it's very rarely as cut and dried as all that. Yeah, I remember those mornings when you used to <laughs> do the news. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little newsroom of our own back at the office. The, <laughs> the office. It was really, yeah. It was intense. It was intense. Yeah, because it was intense. It was five days, five days a week. Yeah. And it was, you know, getting your news and finding your research and finding your, your pictures and then how to pronounce all these Middle Eastern names correctly. <laughs> Mahumaru Abu Jabi. <laughs> <laughs> that I had to practice a lot. Oh, that's just my stage name. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, well, that's, you know, that's a really nice segue into what I would like to talk about with you today, which I always enjoy our conversations mm. anyway, but I, um, even when I don't direct them, but we're going to... Um, I'd like to talk about, as actors, w the situations that we very often find ourselves in that are not necessarily um, what we thought of when we were younger and said, I want to be an actor when I grow up. You know? okay. And doing the news is one of them. Doing mm. this show is another one of them. Um, managing a theater, um, uh, managing an, the office of a theater and a box office. Um, so let, let's focus on that, okay. um, and we'll also talk about Alani. Let's start with Alani, because um, you are an actor, considered an actor there? I am, oh gosh, there's so many names. It's cast member. Oh, oh. I am a cast member uh, in the entertainment department as a resort performer. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, and you are one of the uncles at Alani. I am, yes, I am an uncle. I am a storyteller. Uh, Mo'olelo. Okay. Storyteller. So you, people can find you at the park um, telling stories, playing the ukulele and singing, sometimes teaching. Um, Yes, we are at the resort. Um, we do strolls around the resort. Uh, we uh, um, see our guests and, you know, we talk story with them. Uh, we do storytelling down at our Circle of a Light Ula, which is our little fire pit down there. And uh, uh, usually we do it four times a day. And uh, the, the story times are announced on the, the daily newsletter that is printed for the guests, and they can come down and hear a story. And um, let's see, we also do uh, ukulele classes. We do, you know, basically we, we uh, lend a very familial ambience to the resort. Yeah. Do you feel like you're acting when you're telling those stories? Uh, there is a... Um, there is a part that I have to go to uh, to get those stories, to express those stories, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I guess you would say it was acting. Um, uh, I'm not, uh, the way I would tell stories is not the way that Uncle Pono tells stories, which is my name at the resort. Um, because I have to uh, relate to the guests and, you know, where they come from, I have to realize, I have to show them that this is another side of uh, our islands. Sure, you know, okay. Uh, our, our legends and um, our stories. So yeah, I do have to put on a certain kind of uh, different persona as, as a storyteller. You're tapping into your tapping into <laughs> Yeah, and ta you know, tapping into the actor, and, and because uh, there are different uncles there, because we have to cover all the shifts, and, um, and all of us are different. Mm -hmm. All of us tell a story a different way. And um, so I think I'm more theatrical uh, than the others because of my background. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so it is acting in a way. I, I feel like um, there is a persona, I suppose there's a persona that I have here that I don't necessarily have when we go back to the office. But mm -hmm. part of that is just, you know, doing the job. We're going to keep things going and I get to ask a lot of questions and um, so it's a it's a little something different it's not quite you know it's nothing like st studying a script and developing a character and all of the work that goes into acting that is um, uh, was foremost my primary passion although I love doing this I mm -hmm. loved doing the news I love doing um, yeah and you, and you you kinda stumbled into it and you found out that you liked it like whoa this is kind of cool yeah I think I don't know yeah so. because it was it was just a piece of um, there are things that I've done that it was just a piece of theater that's what got me in because we're obsessed with theater right mm -hmm. you're obsessed with theater I know this because you work at a theater, you work at Alani on the weekends, and you very often are in our shows and or directing and assistant directing shows, yeah. stage managing. Yeah. Why do you do that? And now I'm reviewing. And now you're reviewing shows. Holy cow. Watch out. Why do you do that? 
Why do I do it? Why do you do all of that? And even uh, though sometimes um, your boss says, well, you're getting in really deep here. You're going to want to break. Yeah, but you yeah. do it anyway. Why? I do do it anyway. I don't know. I guess because I do like it. And I think that if I don't do it, then, um, you know, it might not get done. Oh. Or, um, or sometimes it, it's to feed my own, uh, my own need to, to have art in my life. Yeah. Um, I was telling John, my partner, that, um, you know, he, he, he works, he also works at Alani. So he, he works eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, and it's, uh, and he's in entertainment too. So it's a certain type of, uh, a job per se. It's still kind of in the arts, but not really, mm. you know, because he's doing the same thing all the time. So I said, you know, you need to feed your art side, you know, do whatever you need to do, go paint, do drawing, do, uh, you know, whatever it is, take a dance class, you know, but feed your art side because it, it's, it's, it gets hungry. You know, your art side gets hungry and it, it's going to tell you, I need to do something. So um, yeah. And sometimes it doesn't say, I feel like sometimes it doesn't say that clearly, but then I get involved in a show, or I wrote some poetry recently for, because of a, a contest, uh -huh. that, um, and I was shocked at what came out of me and realized, wow, I really needed that. Or yeah. you know, I'll get involved in a, something as um, a brief a commitment as the One Minute Play Festival that we did, that literally that was like th three or four rehearsals and then two nights of shows and you're done. But I realized, oh, I feel so much better doing that. And it it's a release. It, it releases your, yeah. you know, your art side. Your art side has to get out. Do you think that everyone has that and some people just never really tap into it? I think so. Uh, we have to do some things. Like, uh, I think some people, you know, like, like uh, that karaoke craze in, you know, Japan, you know, Japanese people, they work, 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 and then they release. You know, they go out, they get... Uh, inebriated and they sing, you know. Uh, some people are comedians, they have to laugh. Some people just go clubbing and they dance. You know, there's always left brain, right brain kind of stuff yeah. going on, right? And I think you have to balance it. So even though we work in the arts, you know, it's still the business side and it's, it's stuff we have to do. It's, we can't express ourselves as we want to freely. So that's why we do shows. That's why we do stage managing. That's why we do readings. You know, it's just to exercise that muscle. Yeah. And I was uh, involved in a reading um, last weekend uh, with a group of people, and it was five hours, this reading. What were you reading, Nicholas Nickleby? We were reading uh, The Boy. Or, as I'm sorry, Boy by Anna Ziegler. Oh, I'm not familiar and, with um, and it's uh, Jim Ina's going to direct, and he's directing it at TAG. It's going to be the 2017 season. And he's getting like a group of actors, and he's having separate readings throughout the year. <clears throat> and uh, so I was involved in this one. It was great. Just to do that. Uh, okay, hold on for just a second. We're going to go to a break. We'll come right back. Um, please stay put. We'll be right back with Center Stage. Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching ThinkTech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha, how you doing? It's me, Angus McTech, wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on ThinkTech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D A N E L I A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! White girls, they get away with anything. On the air. <laughs> 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 
This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. If you would like to join in the conversation, you may do so. You can tweet us live, if you're watching the show live, uh, at Think Tech HI. If you would ever like to join us in the audience, which would also be live, you may do so. Just email j at thinktechhawaii.com. That's J-A-Y. And he will hook you up. Also, if you, I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, my hair was on my mic. I didn't hear it there. Um, also, if you uh, or someone you know really should be on this show, someone who'd like to talk about the process of art, why we do what we do and how we do it, uh, then please tweet me, it's all about Donna, at it's all about Donna. Okay, back to Will Kahele, who is um, many things at Kumukuhu Theater. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking how that looked. I'm Sorry. <laughs> Oh, when I she was, was listening in her earpiece, people. I have observed that a <laughs> overlord is in my ear. Yeah, I forget sometimes that everybody doesn't have a little voice in their ear. Mm. I told you my therapist told me I should talk to myself more often now, and I wonder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people think that's, that's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, okay, so just uh, being a part of a reading is a form of expression. That is a form of theatrical expression that um, I don't, I, I have spent, you know, we're on like three and a half years of this show. Um, and my question always is why? Why do you do it? That's what, and some people can talk about it really, really easily. Some people it's like herding cats trying to get them to talk about that because so few of us can really define it. Mm -mm. I feel the same way, too. Yeah. But you need to do it. You need to do it. You have so, to exercise that. Do you know anyone who, you, who does not seem to have an artistic outlet that they exercise? Uh, no. I don't, I don't know anybody like that. I think, somebody, I think everybody does something, you know, um, even if it's reading. Can... Reading be an artistic out. Huh? Well, it's 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 uh, something to exercise that side of them that's not what they do on a daily basis. You know, like gets them out of the office, so they read. It takes them out of their world, out of their ex uh, reality for a little while, yeah, and it puts them into another reality. Another, I know okay. people that just read. You know, they work, 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 work. They go home and they read. They yeah. have libraries, volumes. And, I suppose watching, um, watching theater or film or, or reading uh, is a way of engaging in uh, a, an art, but not a creative process. Right, yeah. It's more uh, cerebral. It's more cerebral, yeah. Um, uh, I have a nephew, my darling nephew Noah is a doctor, and he probably wouldn't say that he um, expresses himself through art, that was the one class in like his entire life that he didn't <laughs> score mm. all thumbs ups in. But he um, uh, refinished their, took a very plain unfinished basement and turned it into like a nightclub. I mean, the, uh, uh, the way he thought about the lighting and ran the wires and put in the fireplace and the, uh, you know, projection TV, all of that. That is a part of the creative process. Yeah, that's creative. Um, so let's, if we could talk a little bit more about, um, so we're talking about why we do what we do. I've always had this kind of fascination with the behind the scenes of like, you know, theme parks. When I was a kid in Chicago, we had um, Great America that became Six Flags Great America and um, Kings Island over in Ohio we used to go to sometimes. You know what I'm talking about with theme parks. So there's shows you can go see, there's roller coasters you can ride, there's sh kitty things that you do and food and all of that. And one time I had to go to the bathroom and I took a wrong turn and I ended up behind the scenes and it was shocking to me because you really are transported into a different world. <coughs> when you're in a park or a resort that does it right, it, it does transport you into a different world. Mm -hmm. And I went, got in behind the scenes and was like, these people are just like me, <laughs> which I didn't take comfort in at the yeah. moment. I'm not exactly sure Yeah, they're what. breaking the magic. Yeah. Um, you pro there, you pr there are probably some Disney secrets you're not supposed to share, but can we talk a little bit about the Disney process? Because they really, 
score big points when it comes to taking those cast mates um, uh, and instilling in, in them a, an instinct of the show. Yeah, is that mm -hmm. accurate? Yes. Yeah. How do they go about doing that? Um, it, it's everything is treated as uh, as a big theater, let me say. Um, when we go out from backstage, as soon as we get out of backstage, we are entering on stage. So it doesn't matter where you are in the resort, uh, as long as you're coming off stage and entering on stage, you are on mm -hmm. from, from the very first step. And do, you, do they encourage you to have this public persona that is? Uh, they encourage you to, uh, like for me, um, I, ooh, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I, am, I am uncle, so I am a warm, kind of uh, hospitable uh, caretaker, if you will, of the resort and uh, very welcoming and, you know, just share the Aloha spirit. With everybody that that's comes kind in. of how you are naturally, but I would imagine. I think that's why I was hired. At Disney, you don't have bad days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not allowed. I mean, sometimes it rains, you know, and you can't go out and do your thing. Oh. No, I mean you personally oh. Oh, have those yeah. days when you're not always welcoming. Yeah. Never to customers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never had one of those days yet. Yeah. Um, do you think that the, do you think that what you are doing there is um, improving your work as an actor? Is it feeding your creative spirit somehow? Uh, in, the, in the storytelling part, it does because then I get to see how I affect um, uh, the patrons. You know, um, if I, if by uh, telling them my stories, they they are uh, responsive, receptive. Um, you know, they 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 come back to me after the stories and they thank me for uh, sharing that story with them. Mm -hmm. uh, they get their families and they take a picture with Uncle. You know, by the fire pit. You know, all that kind of stuff is. And uh, you know, we have some interactive things like uh, there's one story that I tell that. I do a little melee, you know, I sing, and then they respond in a little melee back, and they do a little hula with the melee, and, uh, and they all do it. And it's like, it's always fun for me to see how many of them are gonna do it, you know, and how many of them, you know, are just too shy. And so I tell them, you know, uh, here, right now, in this moment, I say, we are all family. I said, because we're all here together, there's never gonna be another moment that we're not all gonna be together here, now, in this space. So this is your family. Don't be ashamed. You know, <laughs> it's cool. We're we're all here together, and um, and and when we start off with a song, you know, it's like okay. So you know, we're here's the campfire, and we're all singing a song. And I said, okay, go. And then it, <laughs> it's like I, what? <laughs> I can hear you guys. I hear you breathing. I don't hear anything else. And then they all laugh. And then they all second time around, you know, they're all louder and louder and louder. That's oh, nice. kind of cool. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of cool from my side. Just to get them to where, you know, I need them to be. Yeah. Or but it's a whole, it is theater. It's a whole different kind of theater to it's be, to have kind. that level of, because you can change. You also have license to change based on their reactions. Yeah, you don't, you don't have set lines that you're saying. Um, the story, yeah, the story is lines. more or less, yeah. Um, but yeah, we can go off script as far as relating to the uh, to our resort guests, you know, and their families, and they're so cute, you know? oh. and you, and they're from everywhere, and sometimes it's their first time, and they're all like, oh my gosh, you know, we're so happy to be here, it's our first time, and um, and they they just fall in love with the resort, they fall in love with that side of the island, and you know, and yeah, they go everywhere, they go to Waikiki, they go to outer islands and stuff, and. Yeah. And the kids are always cute. <laughs> are they asking, where's Mickey? Um, no, because they see a lot of them. 
I see a lot of the. Oh, is Mickey there? The friends, yeah. Oh, Mickey's I didn't always, know. Mickey's on vacation. Oh. With Minnie. <laughs> uh, Donald and Daisy are there also. Pluto came over. Oh. Goofy. <laughs> Chip and Dale. <laughs> Chip and Dale are there. <laughs> yeah, and we're also gonna get Moana. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole. Can we talk? We just have a little bit. I oh, know I don't want to get off topic. <laughs> I, I only have two minutes. Man. Wow, that's fast. Um, uh, so yeah, the Halloween costume for Moana. Um, can you give me your, you know, the uproar about that? It's kind of quieted down now. The one, uh, you mean for Maui? Yes, for Maui. Uh -huh. That, um, so you are Kanaka Maui. How do you feel about it? Um, I did not think it was, uh, offensive in any way. Sorry, guys. Um, it wasn't Hawaiian. It was, uh, if anything, it was... Polynesian, but if anything else, it was um, someone's uh, imagination on, it was a cartoon, basically, it was an animation, but it was somebody's imagination, and they put that together, and that's what they came up with, yeah. and it was uh, targeted for uh, kids, right, because that's what cartoons are, and so kids at heart, and, and it was just, it was a costume, it was a costume, it it was yeah. a costume. <laughs> I think there's some people who were offended by the idea of putting on brown skin, that it was akin to blackface, um, and also the use of the cultural tattoos on it. And but it wasn't, uh, were those cultural tattoos, or were there, were, was it somebody's take on a cultural tattoo? You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, if you go to, uh, any one of the Pacific uh, cultures, will you find those tattoos? Probably not. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to, th thank you for your take on that. I, I don't want to, certainly don't want to offend anyone if someone right, is, yeah. is it was just my, by that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just thought, but it's, a, it's somebody's imagination concept yeah. of what it is. It's not, he didn't say, oh, look, here's a Hawaiian man. Let's just put Let's it on a costume. And, <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> I got to wrap up. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Let's go watch the <laughs> debate, welcome. everybody. Thank you for being here. There's a few people in the studio I'd like to thank. Our uh, floor manager, Rich Prapis, who's right <coughs> over there. Thank Yay, you. Hey, Rich. Much. Our studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my in ear. ear. And Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all this together. Thank you, and we will see you. I will be here next week. Jay Fidel will be here hosting think, uh, uh, Center Stage next week. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>